Hello and welcome back. Virtualization is the topic that we are going to discuss in this lecture. It has been a cornerstone technology for several cloud-based platforms. In this lecture, we are going to look at different types of virtualization platforms which have formed the basis of cloud computing. Let's look at some of the metaphors that explain the concept of virtualization. First one is shopping. Shopping is something that uh, I believe most of us have uh, experienced in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, for example, if you want to buy some food items, you could uh, walk to a restaurant across the street and place an order for your favorite food item. Alternatively, you could use uh, an online portal if a shop offers such a thing or use some sort of a smartphone app to place a similar order for the food items or any other uh, shopping uh, item that you want to buy. An associated metaphor is related to money. So any transactions that you do for purchasing some services or products, whether walking into a physical shop or placing online, uh, we usually pay for such services. It, it, it can be a payment that is done in hard cash or there could be options to make the payments by using some sort of a plastic money such as your credit card or uh, your debit card etc. An important thing to note in these metaphors is the interactions that you go through when engaging with these entities. These entities means uh, either the shop from where you purchase something such as this uh, restaurant or it could be money uh, that how you interact with the money part. You could be using currency notes or you could be using uh, plastic money such as uh, uh, a debit card or a credit card etc. So clearly one is virtual and another is a physical one. For example uh, in a physical scenario involving money you could carry only a limited amount of money in your pocket whereas on a virtual case uh, you can you can have unlimited amount of money depending upon how much you have in your bank account. So similar concept applies to the computing uh, where the virtualization of computing resources means that you don't get a physical actual instance of a computing resource such as a computer. Rather than this you get a virtual instance of it. So how this is achieved? Typically the the hardware resources such as CPU, memory, disk, network etc which uh, which are part of the computer they are offered as software entities. Essentially they are a set of files which can be manipulated by using some programmatic means and in that way they offer a form of abstraction. So what it also lets you do is you could partition the physical host into logically isolated environment to create virtual machines something that is called as virtual machines or containers. So you could partition the actual physical CPU uh, which may have let's say four cores into four different CPUs full-fledged CPUs and similarly your physical host memory let's say if it was uh, 8 gigabytes of main memory you could partition or you could use these resources, a quad core CPU, 8 GBs of RAM, uh, let's say 500 GB of uh, uh, hard disk and so on. You could use these resources on a host system to create multiple virtual machines, uh, each having a subset of these resources. And on top of that virtual machine, you could install a regular operating system and further applications can be installed and executed on such an operating system. So in that sense, you are able to partition your host into logically isolated environments, which are called virtual machines or containers in some cases. So how is this virtualization offered? Typically, you will have a special layer of software, which is known as hypervisor or VMM virtual machine monitor. Typically this is how this layer is referred to in literature. Uh, it could also be offered, the virtualization could also be offered by some facilities in the operating system itself where a user may be able to run multiple isolated uh, user space instances of that operating system. So in that way it will give you a feeling of multiple 
uh, isolated virtual machines or containers running on the same underlying hardware. So let's look at the architecture of a system which has some virtual machines created and running on it. So at the very bottom you see the hardware layer which comprises of your regular network interface card, your hard disk, your processor and memory and so on. On top of it you may have a host operating system installed and typically it will have device drivers and other facilities which which uh, help access the underlying hardware and uh, make use of it and on top of it you may have a virtualization layer it's a specialized layer which helps project the actual physical hardware as virtual resources so you may have all these resources uh, carved out of the physical ones like these so what happens is uh, this virtualization layer that that may be part of your operating system or it could be a separate piece of software installed on an existing native uh, operating system such as Linux or uh, Windows and on top of this these virtual resources uh, user can install a regular operating system and on that operating system you may run your regular applications you may have files and so on uh, and you can have multiple virtual machines running on a same physical hardware we are mainly concerned with server virtualization what it means is that you can have multiple hardware machines uh, on which you may have installed your regular operating system and each operating system may have its own specific applications you can consolidate both of these uh, virtual machines onto single uh, physical host here where you can create virtual machines which can have the the same guest operating system as it was here prior to the virtualization and install the similar applications uh, that were existing before you did the virtualization let's look at the variants of uh, virtualization first one is uh, as we just saw a second ago a hypervisor or a virtual machine monitor based which can be further of two types and the second one is operating system based where you can have multiple isolated user space instances of the base operating system kernel examples are Linux LXC or Solaris containers so in case of uh, the hypervisor based the types are hosted one example is uh, VirtualBox from Oracle or VMware player and the bare metal for example Zen and KVM in case of Linux let's look at uh, the VMM based virtualization types so on the left you see the bare metal based VMM there is a layer of software which is directly installed on the physical hardware and this layer is typically a special uh, operating system kernel which offers the specialized services required to project the actual physical resources as virtual ones and this layer provides necessary isolation to different virtual machines so this forms a single virtual machine and this is the second virtual machine and this is the third virtual machine and in the case of hosted one you will have a regular operating system installed directly on top of a physical hardware and a VMM is installed as a regular application on top of the host operating system in that sense your typical VM is nothing but a regular operating system process running on a host operating system and obviously there is this additional layer of uh, uh, software that comes between a virtual machine and the actual physical resources underneath whereas this is not the case in case of a bare metal one and typically bare metal VMMs perform better in several scenarios than the hosted ones let's look at uh, the basics of implementation of the virtualization layer 
one of the chief goal of uh, a virtualization layer software is to ensure that the applications that run inside each of the virtual machines can execute in a safe and isolated manner that is they do not cause any harm to the co-located virtual machines or the overall system remains in a very safe state now each processor typically has uh, some sensitive instructions and some behavior sensitive instructions etc so the idea here that is applied by any virtualization layer is to trap those sensitive instructions and emulate them in the vmm layer so that those safety checks and balances can be applied in that layer before those instructions are actually executed on the physical hardware so the technique used typically for implementing such a thing is binary translation so those sensitive transactions uh, those uh, sensitive non virtualizable instructions uh, for a processor architecture they are binary translated and trapped in the vmm layer and appropriately emulated so that is the one basic technique that is used for ensuring that the instructions that arise out of different virtual machines they can be executed safely and in an isolated manner so let's look at the os based virtualization typically this is how the architecture overall architecture looks like at the bottom again you have the host machine hardware in comprising of your cpu disk etc and on top of it you have a operating system installed what also is visible here is that you have a shared operating system kernel shared in the sense that when you create different containers or virtual machines or virtual environments on such a host you have the kernel which is shared by multiple guest operating systems so in that sense you may have a different root file system but you may not have a different kernel per se so for example if your operating system is let's say ubuntu 12.04 uh, you may not install let's say windows as a virtual environment here or a container here guest uh, virtual machines they have to have an operating system version which is compatible with the kernel of the host operating system that is a kind of a restriction of os based virtualization other than that uh, the isolation semantics uh for the virtual machines remain essentially the same as we saw in the case of uh, vmm based virtualization so what is uh, available in os based virtualization it allows an arbitrary directory on the host operating system to act as a file system root for the guest operating system similarly this will allow the privilege separation between different containers or virtual machines or virtual environments that you create on such a host operating system and kernel provides typically the utilities and uh, other tools to allow the management of resources such as uh, enforcing uh, cpu quota disk quota and memory quota that is available to different guest operating uh, systems so i already talked about the key features that is you can have quotas for various resources network and file system isolation is there example of implementation of such a virtualization is uh, linux lxc and uh, also the basic uh, ch root utility which is typically found in uh, unix based operating system so let's look at why do we virtualize main reason for using virtualization technologies is to optimize or uh, improve the utilization of hardware resources in any data center the hardware resources are often underutilized and machines are typically over provisioned that is so whenever you deploy any application you don't requisition the exact same amount of uh, computing resources uh, as your application normally requires you provision for the worst case scenario which is not 
not uh, the scenario that is always happening so in that sense your capacity is kind of wasted most of the time and we also want to harness the capabilities of improved hardware such as uh, CPU and disk speeds etc this you do by packing more virtual machines onto the same hardware and there can also be use cases where you want to run legacy applications uh, which were which were written for let's say some older version or a specific version of an operating system but the modern hardware may not be able to support it so in that kind of a cases you may use virtualization to to uh, host such kind of applications and another important uh, reason for using virtualization is it makes the hardware entities as a software entities which are uh, much more easier to manipulate and manage than the actual hardware this leads to easier uh, provisioning of computing resources uh, like if you want to provision let's say a machine with uh, 4 gig uh, of RAM and uh, some amount of CPU and disk and so on you may quickly make such a virtual machine since all it needs is some manipulation of uh, some files uh, a few clicks of uh, your mouse could result in a virtual machine which has that kind of a configuration whereas uh, earlier when you were not using let's say any kind of virtualization you will end up procuring the actual physical uh, hardware and making sure that operating system is installed and other things are appropriately set up so that takes time so virtualization allows you to have easier and faster provisioning of computing resources so let's summarize uh, what we saw in this lecture virtualization basically allows you to abstract the hardware resources and expose them as software entities which are much more easier to manipulate and manage and operate than their physical hardware counterparts we use virtualization mainly to improve the resource utilization in our data centers so that we can run different virtual machines on a single shared underlying hardware and often these VMs may have different operating systems and these virtualization technologies they come in different types of flavors it could be operating system based or it could also be based on uh, some sort of a hypervisors or VMMs virtual machine monitors which can further be of different types such as hosted or bare metal so to close this lecture I would like uh, you to try creating some virtual machines using uh, your favorite uh, hypervisor for example you could use VMware player which is freely downloadable from VMware site or you could also use uh, VirtualBox from Oracle which is also available freely from Oracle website so you can install these pieces of software on your uh, machine such as your laptop or your desktop etc and try creating virtual machines by using some operating system image you can download an ISO file of let's say a Linux distribution and create a virtual machine using these tools